This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information computing and communication. It is the fourth one in a set of video clips on computer communication and networking. It explains the fundamental difference between switching methods in old telephone networks and in modern computer networks. In the case of old telephone networks, the amount of information to be transmitted i.e. the bandwidth or throughput required for such transmission is fairly constant. Communicating speakers at either end of a telephone conversation speak at about the same speed, so that encoding their speech into some electronic signal to send across a network requires a fairly constant bandwidth or throughput across that network. In such a case, it makes sense to establish and to maintain a dedicated fixed bandwidth, fixed throughput connection between the communicating parties. That fixed bandwidth connection is efficiently utilized and remains busy for the entire duration of the call, even during brief silences when neither the red speaker nor the blue speaker are speaking, saying anything. In former telephone switches, the connection of a phone conversation through the network was done through what is called circuit switching. Electrical wires from the calling party to the called party were effectively connected to one another end on end, building a complete electrical circuit through the intermediate telephone switches. During the whole connection, both calling and called parties, as well as all intermediate lines, were busy. This was called space division multiplexing because spatially distinct intermediate lines would be used over time by different subscribers. In modern telephone networks, physical wires or wireless connections are multiplexed over time between several conversations, which is called time division multiplexing. Something similar happens in radio and TV broadcasting, all being not over physical circuits, but through the air or antenna cables. The radio and TV signals of several senders are broadcast simultaneously, but in different frequency bands, which is called frequency division multiplexing. But in all cases, whether space-time or frequency division, the established circuit builds one connection, which is busy for the entire duration of the conversation or the broadcasting time. The situation is quite different in computer communication because computer communication is very jerky, quite asymmetrical, and comes in bursts interspersed with potentially large silences. When a user sitting at her computer surfs the web, she typically types just a few characters at a time and then gets a load of information back from the server that she queried. Then there is silence until she has digested that and comes back with another query. Even when two computers communicate with one another, the amount of exchanged information can be very asymmetrical and jerky and bursty. And the sending and receiving of messages can be separated by eminently variable silences. It would thus be very difficult and very inefficient to dedicate end-to-end -end electrical circuits for two computers to communicate. Allocating large bandwidth circuits would be inefficient due to the waste during the silences, but allocating a narrow bandwidth circuit would be hopelessly slow for the computers and their waiting users. Thus, one does not reserve any circuits, but instead one transmits messages in bursts called packets over wideband cables and radio waves. In those physical cables and radio waves, as well as the switchers and routers, remain available to transmit other packets during the silences. This is what is called packet switching. Packet switching works like mail or parcel sorting in postal centers. Instead of a path being reserved between a sender and a receiver, a sender can more or less send whatever it likes whenever it likes to the nearest switching or sorting center. The center will then do its best efforts to convey the packet, mail or parcel, as soon as possible 
to the next nearest switching or sorting center, and so on until the packet, mail or parcel, reaches its final destination. For that to work, every packet, mail or parcel, needs to carry a destination address, which we already know they do from our protocol discussion. As suggested by this drawing, a packet, in black, may be delivered to C out of order after another packet, in yellow, that was sent before the black one. It is even possible that a packet, mail or parcel, may be completely lost, as happens occasionally in postal systems. In view of the capacity and experience with modern computer packet switching networks, it turns out that their cost and performance is so much superior to those of circuit switch networks that almost all traffic today is switched over packet networks anyway. Old telephone trunk lines and local phone lines may remain circuit switched and thus be blocking, but most such lines are now at least time multiplexed, if not packet switched, so that multiple conversations are carried simultaneously on the same wires.